getting right into today's video we're gonna start off by removing her current design I did not share this video with you guys it was very similar to the set that we previously did on her so I figured I would just go ahead and skip that one but if y'all want to see it I will definitely show you a lot of her designs are gonna be a little bit more on the repetitive side just different combos which is really nice because we're able to kind of just see how mixing it up and changing it up a little bit can make a huge difference but still looks so good so if you're ever stuck on ideas it's a kind of a good way to go back on sets that you've previously done and just tweak them a little bit so starting off i'm going in with my e-file at a speed of 11,000 rpms and i am using a medium grit five in one bit from kiara sky we're going to be going in with about medium pressure and then we're going to be just filing off that design making sure that we are not removing bulk product all I want to do is remove that top coat and design and then at this point if she does have any lifting I would go ahead and remove that as well do note you guys can see that she is missing one of her nails she did end up breaking it off so we're gonna be repairing that pretty much going to be bringing all of that acrylic down into a very very thin layer pretty much removing it all the way just using my e-file and then we're gonna be adding a tip and rebuilding that nail from scratch We're going to be going in and just removing that acrylic from her nail you can always soak it off but to me honestly i do not want to bring out my soak off bowl waste all that time when i could just easily go in while i'm already doing the rest of the prep so i just opted for this option like i said you can always soak it off but for the purpose of being a little bit more time efficient i'm just going to go ahead and file it all the way off typically when i do soak offs anyways i try to file it into a thin layer and then soak off so pretty much doing the same process just not soaking off the entire product so we're going to be going in and as you can see it's already a little bit on the thin side and you notice my thumb go over her nail i am checking to make sure that there is no heat built up because it is such a short nail and it is only her natural nail there under that acrylic i have to be extra careful when i am filing so that i don't cause a heat spike and running my finger over the surface just gives me kind of a glimpse into how hot the nail is or if i'm good so that's kind of why i do that going in with my mandrel bit we're going to be filing the nail very, very light pressure, just buffing off that shine, pushing back her cuticle at the same time, and then fully removing any lifted area that she may have. Very, very minimal to no lifting is on her nails. So just going in and buffing off that shine. And I'm making sure that I'm trying to get into those hard to reach areas. And then we're gonna be going in with a diamond bit to fully remove all that dead skin and then a cuticle ball bit to smooth out her cuticles. As always, I'm using a speed of 4,000 RPMs, very light pressure on my handpiece. Mandrel bit and sanding band are both from Profiles Backstage. I'm using a medium sanding band. If you prefer to use a fine, definitely do so but do not go to a coarse these are a lot finer than the zebra grit one so i always end up using a medium one it just works a lot easier for me but if you are a beginner definitely recommend sticking to a fine sanding band Mami, ¿qué más? Hay algo en ti que me tiene mal Que te anda puesta pa' 
Now to finish repairing this nail, we're simply going to shape out her nail. She did have a little bit of crookedness to it, so we're just gonna go ahead and round it off. I'm adding a tip to that nail. As you can see, there's like no acrylic lift on there. Gluing it on with my Young Nails brush on glue, and then we're gonna be reshaping her nails just a smidge. I always like to do this because it makes me feel so good when I lay the acrylic, and everything is just such good shape so we can always leave this towards the end it is just personal preference whether you want to do it now or towards the end i'm also going to be using this step as removing the rest of the design that may have been left behind on the sides or the tip of her nail um, i don't want to put any more acrylic on top of there and pretty much encapsulate the existing design if i left any behind and then of course gonna be making sure that that tip is nice and straight by simply going in on the sides and squaring off that tip as well. Quickly taking a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, dusting off the nail surface and also dehydrating. You can always use a dehydrator if you prefer that. I just feel like I'm killing two birds with one stone, so might as well. And I'm gonna be going in and prepping her entire natural nail on that index finger. So for our acrylic fill, this is my favorite part because it just brings back to life that existing set. It is such an easy way to get going and doing another set. You can fully change the design on top. So fills have definitely become very much so one of my favorite things to do as a nail tech. It just, it just looks so good once you're done. So we're gonna be going in with a medium sized bead of acrylic. I'm placing that where her existing acrylic is, holding the finger down, pushing that acrylic up while still making sure that that product is flowing down towards the tip and not into that cuticle area. And if any little cleaning has to be done, I will make sure that I fully scrape it off and don't leave any overflowed product in that cuticle area because that can cause lifting. So. Super, super simple, very quick process once you get the hang of your liquid to powder ratio. Fills are easy and super, super quick. Now I'm gonna be redoing that entire nail, basic acrylic application for this using the same nude acrylic. This is the Sea Salt Caramel from Not Polish from their chocolate collection. I am obsessed with this color. I used the gel polish one on my own nails and I love the shade of it. It is super, super pretty. Definitely geared towards more of a tan skin. So if you have clients that have tan skin like I do or my client does, it looks so good and definitely complements the skin tone very, very well. Once I'm done with my fill and everything is nice and dry, we're gonna go in and file, quickly filing that cuticle area, making sure that it is nice and flush with my five in one bit at 11,000 RPMs, still medium grit. I pretty much use the same grit for all my stuff. And I'm gonna be going in very quickly, just stealing that cuticle, making everything nice and flush. This is also gonna help prevent any lifting issues. So if you're layering on that acrylic right in the cuticle area and you're noticing that your nails are popping off, make sure you file it so that it looks like it's coming out of her natural nail and it's not actually laying on top of it. So that is always key. Next, I'm gonna be going in with my hand file. I have been loving hand filing. I just feel like it looks so good. 
and it just makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. So we're gonna be going in on the sides and then filing very quickly the surface of the nail. And then of course, squaring off that tip, I like to turn the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. And then I square it off that way. I was able to get a good little glimpse of me doing it on an actual client in this video. So hopefully that kind of helps if you are struggling with that. Going in with my buffer and buffing the surface of the nail, we're gonna be doing this in prep for our nail art. I have a good alternative if you don't wanna purchase these. They are a little bit on the pricier side, so I found a good option on Amazon, which I will leave linked down below. And they have black ones, and y'all already know black is my vibe, so definitely a must. I'm just trying to run out of these so then I can start using the black ones. But we're gonna be buffing, making sure everything is nice and smooth. And then we're gonna be cleaning the surface of the nail as well with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. You can always send your client to wash their hands. I just prefer to just keep them in my chair as long as possible so that we're not wasting any time. Now for the nail art, we're gonna be keeping it deep French. This time we're gonna be doing black. So she definitely loves a specific vibe and I am not mad at it because I absolutely adore these type of designs. It looks so good. And if y'all have not seen like my TikTok videos, black is definitely my entire aesthetic of my entire life. So the black and white and the neutrals, it just looks so good in my opinion. And switching it up a little bit is always a really good alternative to whenever you don't know what the heck to do on someone's nails. So this was a test nail, that's why I fully did it first. We're adding black as our base, curing that in the light, and then I'm just rubbing in my chrome. This is from Profiles Backstage, as a lot of my nail art is. Nothing fancy, just using my finger, rubbing it in. She approved at that point, so then we moved on. We're gonna be doing some more black French pretty much on all of the nails as our base, and then adding nail art on top. So this one is going to be marbleized. So again, starting off with my black base, curing that in the light, and then I'm going in with a layer of blooming gel or blossom gel from Not Polish, using a small brush to apply it so that I don't add too much product. And then straight after that, going in with my white gel, and I'm gonna be kinda just tapping it in, wiggling it on, no specific design. We're just doing like a smoky, marbleized black and white look. As you can see, I'm kind of just skipping some areas and placing it. Let it blossom and bloom. Once you think it looks good, go ahead and wipe the sides and place it back into the light for a full 60 seconds. And then as that is curing in the light, I'm gonna work on the opposite hand. Always, always, always recommend to do that so that you use your time efficiently. If you're a beginner nail tech and getting overwhelmed, just keep moving. You got this, it will be fine. I feel like a lot of the time I would just wait to make sure that I did it correctly and you're wasting time, so might as well just keep moving. I also wanted to mention that we were going nail by nail, so we had no idea what exactly we were doing. We were winging it. So for those of you that may be curious why I didn't just do black base, we kind of switch out her designs quite a bit. So we were just going nail by nail, figuring it out. So I was literally doing that as we were figuring out what we were gonna do. If I knew we were gonna do the entire base black, I would have just done the entire set with my black French and then went in with my nail art. But like I said, we were figuring it out as we're going, as I do a lot of the time, especially on my own nails. So always, always make sure you guys get a really good cleanup brush. 
and I'm using that to save my behind whenever my hand twitches and I struggle to get that nice crisp smile line using the smallest amount of swipe from Young Nails. I'm gonna be using that to easily glide on the surface and clean that up, make it nice and crisp. We're gonna be going in with some spider gel and I left the other nail for the end because I need to top coat that before we go in with the design. We're gonna be doing some textured nail art on top of a shiny surface. So we're gonna wait on that one. This one is so beautiful. I love spider gel and I get so excited whenever I get to use it. Profiles Backstage has some neon and like glow ones so I love to use them. I literally need to incorporate them a lot more in some sets because it's just such an effortless cute touch. So before I cure the spider gel, we're going in with the top coat on the middle finger. That way we're using our time efficiently, popping it in the light both ways, and then I get two steps out of the way. So I added a little bit more just because I feel like it needed a little bit more. And then we're going in, curing it in the light, and then we're gonna be adding our textured snake skin. I'm simply doing long strokes of that black gel right down the center, and then smaller dots on the sides. And before I cure it, so this is fully wet gel, I'm gonna be pouring on black acrylic powder. Whatever black acrylic you have, just go ahead and pour it on there. Make sure it is nice and matte. I like to do multiple layers of the powder, so I'll layer it on there, let it kind of soak into that gel, and then layer some more. And I keep doing that until I see no shininess at all to the design that I'm pouring that acrylic on top of. And then we're gonna be placing that back into the light for a full minute. Then we're gonna be going in, cleaning the surface, add our top coat to the remainder nails that need top coat. I'm taking a lint-free wipe and just cleaning off the excess pigment on all of the nails that have any type of pigment. This one had chrome, so I went ahead and removed that so that it doesn't get all shiny everywhere. And I'm just making sure that I'm adding that top coat fully, especially to the nail art portions. This Gloss It From Not Polish, my favorite go-to shiny top coat. And then we're gonna be placing that in the light for two rounds of 60 seconds, just to be safe and to make sure everything is fully cured. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a ton, and I'll see you guys next time.